the game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move. Marcus Kova here in Stockholm for MMA Nut with Dana Prazak. Bon appetit. How's that sandwich? Um, well, she's a pretty good cook. She didn't have to cook it, but she prepared it perfectly. I was just going to say that's a Swedish sandwich, isn't it? It's not. It's Dutch. It's her favorite. She wanted a sandwich with cheese, so I just got her that. Now, we see, obviously, there's a special bond between coach and fighter, but you seem to be more than just coach and fighter. You seem to be really, really good friends as well. How did this bond grow? It hasn't been that long, a year and a half, correct? Do you want to keep chewing and should I ask Lucia first? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think uh, when you go through war together, you go in, you have to trust one another, you have to know one another, so it's a very bonding relationship. Um, yeah, I think Diane had to learn to trust me, you know, I had to know what Diane was capable of and, and where she goes through and her process of getting ready is, is unique to every fighter. And that's where you bond. I mean, I also have to say that because Diane immigrated to America, I have a weakness because I immigrated. I know all the challenges of being an immigrant. Getting into the boxing world in America is a tough business. I have all these knowledge, the contacts. So I've, I felt a sense of duty to pass that on and to, to, yeah, to share that. Uh, Did you teach about credit as well and how important it is in America? To build credit, absolutely, yeah, but buying a f her first car, I try to give her, f she doesn't always listen, so, you know, <laughs> I told her to, <laughs> to build credit, you know, you, she bought a car cash, I said, mm, not so good, you know, I said, start buying things on credit and pay it off immediately, that's how you build credit, because you can't buy anything in America, but she has her own way of figuring things out, I just say it, and then, you know, it's up to her what she Usually does Usually a month it. later I'll say, you were right about that, Lucia, yeah. I should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> So you just arrived from Holland. Was that your first time in Holland? Mm, it's beautiful. I love Holland. It is beautiful. So beautiful. You planning on going back again? I know you are going back right after the fight, but in the future? Yeah, maybe we can do lots of training camps here. How is boxing? You have such amazing boxing, Thai boxing and, and Dutch style care boxing in Holland. How is the boxing in, in Holland? You know, uh, we prepared in Rotterdam, and Rotterdam is a boxing city of the Netherlands, basically. There's a lot of fighters in Rotterdam, there's a lot of contacts I have in Rotterdam, so it's easier. We sparred with some great fighters, uh, some champions, and some really powerful. We, you know, we switched it up. Um, it's like home. I can, I can spread her bed in the Netherlands because of my contacts, which makes it easy. In America, I spread the bed at Freddy's gym at Wildcard, which is... You know, it, it, it's, when you know people, it's always a little easier, and, and it's all about building relationships to get the right people to work with. Uh, Holland was mainly to acclimate to the jet lag, but also to give a f little feeling of home. She's away from home, so that's important, I think, too. Uh, it's a European culture. It's, it's one step towards Sweden. America's very different, as you know. Um, so those things are important for a fighter. And you said you liked Holland. What's your opinion of Sweden so far? I haven't seen much of it. We're in the, we're in the sticks. We're about <laughs> like an. But um, I can see lots of trees from where we are, <laughs> and they're beautiful trees. <laughs> Everything's really green. It feels like she's in the army. You slip in, slip in, slip in the <laughs> bed. We all have like a room with us. I mean, bed. A, we're in dormitories, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks beautiful they're from the, you know. <laughs> it looks beautiful. There's lots of trees. Do you know? <laughs> I can't. I haven't seen it. Where, where we are, they, you walk outside and there's a road and and there's trees and grass and that's it. No, what's funny is in, in Sweden we have shops. Yes, we do, and we, we have TVs. And really? Yeah. <laughs> I have this box TV in my hotel room. I didn't really? think that they still use those. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't seen those either in a long time. She has a flat screen, but I still got this, the old one. <laughs> Um, hopefully, once the fight's over tomorrow, we'll get to show you the actual city and town. I have to great. say something. You know, first, my first impression was of, of you was that you're you're a very hard person, very tough. You got a great sense of humor. I'm Australian. <laughs> Australians are funny people. That's no, no. true. I'm not so serious. Who's serious more serious about? between the two of you? She is. I don't know. I, it depends. We switch it off. When <laughs> yeah. she's goofy, I get serious and. When I'm serious, she gets, or vice versa, when she's serious, I get goofy.
But tomorrow night it's all seriousness for uh, yeah 20 minutes. Um, there was a lot of politic talks here a minute ago during the press conference because of what's going on in Sweden. Um, women in general have gone through a lot of politics as well in a very manly, man-dominated sport. Um, I think it's a little bit easier for you. It was a little bit harder during during your career. What's the biggest stigma that women have to fight in a man-dominated sport? I mean, for me, in in where where I am you now, obviously, it was different from when Lucy was come uh, in when Lucy was fighting. For me, it's about getting um, fights on promoters' cards on big cards. Um, promoters um, don't put women on cards, and um, and we want to fight, and we can fight, and and we're just as good as the boys. Do you know what I mean? So it for us, it's about getting the shot on the on the big cards, and and um, and getting the support behind us to do that. You know, last year I went to London to the Olympics and when Kathy Taylor fought uh, Oshikawa from Russia, there were 17,000 people roaring. Wow. You know, it was the decibel was measured of an airplane, you know, crossing over. That's how loud it was. There were little kids wearing t-shirts with girl fighters on it. That was like a dream. Um, Unfortunately, when uh, our gold medal winner, uh, American, what was her name Clarissa again? Clarissa Shields. Yeah, Shields. Clarissa Shields came back to America. Nobody knew she won gold. So that's a sadness. No, men even won gold. Huh? No, men no, even. No, no, but we no, knew. No, they didn't even medal. We, we knew the men were now good this year in America. We knew, <laughs> you know. I looked at men's boxing, looked at the heavyweights. It was one, two, hang, one, two, hang in the Olympics. But the women were phenomenal. And England really valued their champion. In um, India, this girl got given an academy for female boxing. Wow. Now there's a movie made, a Maricom movie, made about her life. Million Dollar Live Baby 2? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do the stunt coordinating on that film, but I'm working with Diana this fight, and they're shooting right now. But the thing is that that's how other countries treated their female fighters. In America, somehow... Clarissa Shields, she came home, maybe a hometown welcome. Nobody talked about it, unfortunately. This woman could fight like Mike Tyson. I mean, I was like on you know, the tip of my seat, worried about her opponents getting hurt. That's how powerful she was, and nobody knows about it. So it's just a matter of marketing. Everything's marketing. You got to have someone that says, hey, I like you. I'm going to do this. And, 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 you know, Frida has a, a fortune. She has a good face. She's very marketable. That helps in uh, women's boxing. Um, and she can fight, so it's not just that. But in America, somehow the MMA is taking over, we, uh, boxing is taking a back seat. Women's boxing is a whole other league, their own league. The women's boxing business is a separate business from the men's business. And Now, I came from the same club as, as Frida. There was actually a previous uh, European champion from that club, and, and she felt a little bit like that as well, that she didn't get the same recognition that, that Frida did. And she said it was because of the looks. How is it, in, in not just in boxing and, and mixed martial arts, but in sports in general, we see the, the Serena and Venus Williams. I um, can't remember her name anymore, but she was a negative tennis player, but she was very famous. And um, Yes, you have Sharapikova as well. And, and, and they get, yes, they're very great athletes, but they're almost more sex symbols than they are athletes. What do you think of that? You have to understand that it, it's, um, it's entertainment. Right. right, entertainment. Uh, it's for the sport first. However, entertainment also markets. So that happens. You know, when you have a pretty face or so, or something that they can sell in a particular niche, that's what marketers do. Not just in sports. So of course that happens in sports too. In the beginning, in my time, the girls that have, that looked pretty were you know, signing contracts. They couldn't really fight. They were signing up. It was like being a model. Everybody had their head shot with boxing gloves on. And I was like, what is this? So that's just how the world is wired. You know, you see with uh, um, track and field, the outfits, it's all marketing, selling yourself, selling your body, selling your looks, exploiting your looks. So that's just human nature. It's nothing to do with boxing. It's everywhere in the world. And, you know, the karma of someone that is pretty, it's their karma. If you have a dad that's wealthy, that's your karma. You know, if you have good health karma, you know, if you have a better athletic ability, that's all, you're born with that. There's nothing you can do about it. And the world likes pretty people, so that's what they market. I remember one student of mine in the Netherlands got signed by a, a German promoter. 
and she said she had to dye her hair to give her a character and dress different and she quit and she actually filed a lawsuit against the promoter and I said to her I said if you get hired by um, an airline uh, company you're gonna have to wear their suit and it's a skirt sometimes with heels if you don't like a skirt with heels then you don't sign with that company it's the same thing when a when a promoter signs you he wants to market you so he's gonna put you in a niche or in a package where he can sell the most amount of tickets that's just how it works like when I moved to America I was Dutch I was black but Dutch so I'm European so I'm not African-American I'm not Hispanic it's hard to find a niche you know it's the same thing for Diane I'd like Diane to eventually fight in Australia on a big card because there's some Australian fighters fighting in America right now because that's her market people get her better in Australia unfortunately that's how it works people want to relate I remember the days where I had to blow dry my hair and look all pretty girly instead of my cap backwards like she can sit like this I wasn't allowed to I had to dress and pretend I was normal so people <laughs> could relate to me and not think there's this monster that's gonna fight Ooh, who is she so times are changing uh, and boxing is evolving with it and in addition to that I mean, I've seen tennis players that they dress up in night gowns, in night gowns, in like uh, fashion outfits. Did you see that? It looks ridiculous. You see these buff women standing <laughs> in night gowns. It's like ridiculous. But they try to market them differently. They do unfortunately. a good job in tennis now. Yeah. The marketing. Yeah. There was a time, remember, when um, women tennis players were seen as the low class, and now they're like better than the men. So they're trying, but you know, for some people, it works better than other people. Yeah. But. The two of you tomorrow, you will throw that show that you can throw punches just as well as... In the end of the day, when it comes to boxing, it's, it's not about the marketing. It's about who can throw the hardest punches and the most punches. Right so we'll see you tomorrow night here at Golden Ring. Dana Prazak versus Frida Wahlberg, the main event for the WBC title. Thank you. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move.